here on Democracy Now!, democracynow.org. I'm Amy Goodman. Students at Columbia University here in New York held an emergency protest Wednesday over the school's response to an attack on members of Columbia University Apartheid Divest at a rally on campus last Friday. Police are now investigating how pro-Palestinian students were sprayed with a hazardous, foul-smelling chemical at Friday's protest, including members of Students for Justice in Palestine, Jewish Voice for Peace and Jews for Ceasefire. Eight students were reportedly hospitalized or seeking medical attention. Medical attention. Organizers allege the attack was carried out by two students who are former members of the Israeli military, the IDF using a chemical weapon known as skunk that soldiers also deploy on Palestinians. A Palestinian-American student named Leila described the attack, she says, has left her traumatized in an interview with the um, podcast The Robust Opposition. I remember just smelling this um, smell in the air, and it is just—it was just atrocious. I was like, oh, my gosh, like, it smells like somebody died. Like, what is this smell? And then at first I was like, okay, maybe I stepped in some dog poop. Like, maybe, maybe I'm just tired. Um, I, I tried to, like, kind of ignore it for a little bit. But then after the protest, when the protest was done, I just noticed how bad I felt. I felt so sick. I felt fatigued. I was nauseous. I had a really bad headache. And I was like, something, something is going on here. I'm not sure what, but something is going on here. And then I was getting texts and calls from my friends, and they were like, did you smell that smell? Um, or my friend was like, oh my gosh, I threw up like three times. Like, I don't know what is wrong with me. So when this is used on Palestinians in the West Bank, like for example, um, it's been used um, on peace, peaceful protesters there. It's been used um, on shopkeepers and merchants. So like if a merchant gets their produce sprayed with skunk, they have to throw it all out just because of how bad it stinks. It felt like for a while, like the university, like didn't believe us. Like I told them, um, I told them about it. And it's like, my concerns weren't really being taken seriously. And it wasn't until students started posting photos of themselves being hospitalized and tagging the university being like at Columbia, like we are hospital, like they started taking it seriously. That's Palestinian-American Columbia University student Layla describing Friday's attack on her, as well as other students who were part of a, of a protest. Um, no arrests have been made yet, but the school now says it's banned the suspects from campus while law enforcement investigates. For more, we're joined by Mahmoud Mandani, professor of government at Columbia University, who specializes in the study of colonialism. His books include Neither Settler Nor Native, The Making and Unmaking of Permanent Minorities. His recent interview with The Nation is headlined The Idea of the Nation State is Synonymous with Genocide. And we're joined by Catherine Frankie, a Columbia Law School professor, member of the Center for Palestine Studies Executive Committee on the Board of Palestine Legal, helped write a new op-ed in the campus paper, The Columbia Spectator, headlined Lined, faculty and staff pledge to take back our university. We welcome you both to Democracy Now! Professor Frankie, can you explain what happened, the skunking of the students sprayed with this chemical? Do you know, does the university know who these students were, where they came from, and have they been dealt with? Well, good morning, Amy. Um, so the students were protesting in the main quad of the university last Friday, and we've had a series of protests. Our students are outraged at what's going on in our name and with our tax dollars in Gaza. Um, and uh, while they were protest protesting, and I will say peacefully, um, last Friday, as your um, recording of Layla's uh, uh, recounting of what happened, um, they all of a sudden smelled this horrible stench. And I've, I've smelled skunk water when I've been in the West Bank um, at protests. It is horrible. Um, and what the students were able to do is examine video from that protest and identify, I think, three um, older students. We have a, Columbia has a program with a graduate relationship with um, older students from other countries, including um, Israel. And it's something that um, many of us were concerned about because so many of those Israeli students who then come to the Columbia campus are coming right out of their military service. And they've been known to harass 
Palestinian and other students on our campus, and it's something the university has not taken seriously in the past. But we've never seen anything like this, and the students were able to identify three of these exchange students, basically, from Israel who had just come out of military service, who were spraying the pro-Palestinian students with this skunk water, and they were disguised in kafia so that they could mix in with the students who were who were um, demanding that the university divest from um, uh, from companies that are supporting the occupation and the war, uh, and were um, were protesting and demanding a ceasefire. Um, so we know who they were. The university waited three or four days to actually even say anything about it. They have not reached out to the students who were sick, as you noted, some of whom are still in the hospital. I spoke to one student last night in the hopes that we could get one of them on your show this morning, and he was so mentally and physically disabled from this attack that he said, I haven't left my dorm room in a week. So um, our students are in terrible distress about this, both those who were sprayed and those who weren't. There was another protest yesterday, um, and the students were actually quite afraid to come back onto the campus. Is it true that you've seen these students, uh, the former IDF students, on campus? And what is the administration saying about that since the attack? Well, the university says that they have banned the three identified students from the campus, but I was told that one of them was there yesterday. Um, other students saw him. I don't know that for sure, but several students said they saw one of them. You know, we have a fairly porous campus. To ban them from campus is something that they'd have to volunteer to comply with. Um, uh, except when there is a demonstration, when they lock, they've started locking the campus down in the last several months with gates, and you have to have your ID just get scanned to enter the campus. And then there's a wall of NYPD. When I went to class yesterday, there were hundreds of NYPD officers in uniform lining our campus. So the university's response has not been compassion, support for the students who were attacked. Instead, it's been a militarization of our own campus and a further restraint on our students' ability to protest peacefully, now turning to the excuse of this attack from those who, were, who support the Israeli government and the violence that's being meted out towards Gazans as a, as a kind of pretext to clamp down even further on peaceful protest by our other students. Mahmoud Mamdani, um, you've written about the situation in Gaza. You've spoken about it. There are now over 25,000 Palestinians who've been killed, over 11,000 of them children. The issue of hunger in Gaza um, uh, is a very serious issue raised by the U.N. and medical groups. You have that situation there, and the solidarity expressed um, uh, with the people in Palestine on college campuses. Can you talk about what's happening at Columbia and uh, both staff, professors, students' feelings about whether they can express their views without being uh, doxxed or attacked? Thank you, Amy. Um, the situation at Columbia has been uh, developing. Um, it's it's monitored by an administration which seemed to have very little idea about what to do. At the same time, it had certain assumptions. The assumption was that the main problem at Columbia is anti-Semitism, and the administration should do everything to keep it in check and then to eradicate it. Um, when incidents like this, the chemical spraying, emerged, the administration's first response was kind of disbelief. Uh, give us the facts. Um, overall, it's been a very clumsy handling. Different parts of the administration have different and sometimes conflicting initiatives. At the same time, um, they have a coherence, and the coherence is basically to shut things down and only to have an opening from the top. Uh, so no 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 question of freedom of expression from from below. Um, that's where we are now. Meanwhile, uh, the community is convinced that the shots are being called by those 
who give the money. So how are you organizing, as a professor, with other professors, um, with students? I think uh, the number of concerned professors is growing. Uh, we're all convinced that the initiative must remain with the students. Uh, they are in the front line. But also we're convinced that uh, we should offer whatever guidance we can offer. Um, we, we meet and discuss. I personally have not been involved in face-to-face -face meetings much because of health issues, but I have been involved in, 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 in meetings which are uh, 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 remote, remote meetings. Um, and it's, it's changing every day, and it's developing. Professor Frankie, last semester, Columbia University, uh, the new president uh, at Columbia, um, suspended both SJP, Students for Justice in Palestine, as well as Jewish Voice for Peace, for holding a so-called unauthorized event, a walkout, an art display, in support of a ceasefire in Gaza. Um, so, what are these groups' um, status right now? And also, you yourself have long been involved with issues around Palestine. In fact, Israel deported you. And explain why. This was before October 7th. Well, my circumstances are much less acute than the circumstances of our students right now. Um, I, you know, I've been part of the Barnard and Columbia community since the late 70s. I went to Barnard as an undergrad. And, um, and I've been at Columbia now as a professor for 25 years. Columbia's campus has always been a place where students have engaged the most critical issues of the day. When I was there in the late 70s, it was issues around feminism and pornography and sexual rights. And, and later, there were things around the Iraq War and the invitation of Mahmoud Ahmadinejad to the campus. You know, students, faculty have used the campus as a palette for learning about difficult issues. Um, that's what we do at universities for protesting um, or showing up um, for communities that are persecuted around the world. And what we've seen this administration do since October 8th is um, kind of go to war against our students. I have never seen the university disband student groups for peaceful, peaceful protest. We have scores, 30, 40, 50 complaints that the university has filed against students for violations of the disciplinary code or for organizing protests based on their changing of the rules around how to have an event the night before the event so that the students don't even know that they're violating some new, new event rule. Um, uh, the, the university said that SJP and JVP had to be suspended because they engaged in intimidating and threatening and anti-Semitic rhetoric. And then in private meetings with them, they said, actually, they didn't, but they won't retract that. So that, that, that defamation of our students remains in the public uh, and in the media and in the, the eyes and ears of, of, of our, our alums and of other students, but they won't repudiate it. And so the students feel like they have nothing left that they can do except protest against the university at this point. Um, but, but Professor Mamdani and I and other faculty have been spending an enormous amount of time protecting our students from the university itself. Um, Barnard students are being prosecuted for their uh, uh, social media posts and for hanging Palestinian flags outside of their dorm rooms when New York City law specifically protects the hanging of flags outside of a dormitory. So uh, it feels like we're under a kind of siege, too, at Columbia and at Barnard. Professor Mamdani, um, before you were professor at Columbia, you were professor and director of the Center for African Studies at the University of Cape Town in South Africa. Tomorrow, the decision will come out of the International Court of Justice, an emergency decision on South Africa's case, uh, genocide case, against Israel. Your final comments. Well, uh for those who read the South African application, uh, it must be clear that its uh, its strong point was the was the content, the argument, the substance. Um, the empirical material uh, relied drew totally from UN sources, 
and from no other source, really. Uh, so it was unimpeachable. Um, the, the Israeli side, uh, the Israeli lawyers, did not say anything, uh, did not present any defense on whether a genocide is unfolding. What they did defend uh, was that procedurally South Africa uh, sh should not be the party making an application. Well, Mahmoud yeah. Mamdani, we're going to continue this discussion and post it online at democracynow.org. Mahmoud Mamdani, professor of government at Columbia University, and Catherine Frankie, Columbia Law School professor. I'm Amy Goodman. Thanks for joining us.